Alright. Hey guys, what's up? And, um... <clears throat> today I'm gonna do a movie review of Slumdog Millionaire by the one and only director, Danny Boyle. Now, before we get into the review, by the time I'm uploading this, I should be in Berlin, Germany, Deutschland. But, uh, right now, when I'm filming this, I'm at Hong Kong, China. So, um... It's a pre-recorded video, so that you guys can enjoy it while I'm somewhere else in the other side of the world. But uh, anyway, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to do a review on this movie for a very, very long time. And that's because this is simply one of the best movies in the 21st century, at least in the top three. It's up there with Inception and... Lord of the Rings 3, so this is seriously a great, great movie. So this movie is directed by the one and only Danny Boyle, who also directed classics like Train Spotting, um, and 127 hours later on in his career. And uh, if you truly want to experience the Danny Boyle experience, you have to watch 127 hours, which is also a, a movie that I have reviewed. And one of the reasons being is that, like, 90% of 127 hours is set in this very limited, very claustrophobic space. But yet, this is still one of the most creative and um, artistic movies that I have watched in the decade. So, um, that is extremely impressive. But what's even more impressive is Slumdog Millionaire, which is undoubtedly uh, an, an adapted movie, but the way it's translated to the silver screen is so ingenious, it's so powerful, it really impacts us in the heart, and um, it's a success for me. And because of that, this movie won a total of eight Oscars, which is a lot, to be honest. The thing about this movie that is the most impressive is the plot, because the plot is easily one of the most powerful story that I have heard being told through movies ever. The story is incredibly inspiring. It's about a boy, Jamal, and his brother, Salim, uh, trying to make, trying to survive in India. And by survive, I mean literally survive. Uh, lots of things happened, a riot happened, and they got separated, um, from his, from their mother, and then, uh, people tried to capture them and make them, you know, um, child slaves, and, uh, and then they escaped and they became thieves and scammers, and they even ran into some criminals on the way, and, uh, overall, this movie tells the story of a very difficult and broken life of Jamal, but despite all of these very difficult obstacles in his life, he still manages to be successful, and um, he still manages to achieve his dreams towards the end of the movie, because um, he believed in himself and he would do anything to survive, and this simply tells the story of a boy surviving, and uh, it's just very influential and powerful. And uh, I love how very detailed this story becomes, you know, every single detail, th the movie and the story pays a lot of attention to them, and um, because, of, uh, because of that, at the end, it all pays off, and it feels like, it feels like Jamal's life is, um, is full of all different pieces of puzzles, and those puzzles aren't, like, happy, optimistic things, they are very sad, broken, painful memories, but all of them together in the full picture becomes a, such a great and powerful life, and uh, that's what this story conveys, and that is just simply shocking and mind-blowing at the end. And um, I, just, I just can't stop talking about the plot of the movie, it's so good. Uh, I'll also do make a spoiler, like, do a little spoiler session at the end of the video to simply talk about the plot, because it's just so good. Uh, other than the plot, the cinematography, and the editing, they are top-notch. In a Danny Boyle movie, the cinematography and the editing are two of the strongest characteristics 
that Danny Boyle movies have. Uh, the editing and the cinematography, they are very dirty, they are very chopped up, they are very glitchy, but not in like a digital way, but more like in a life way, uh, very organic way, and uh, they are usually very um, peculiar, very strange. Uh, the camera angles, they usually don't just sit there, they go everywhere, uh, they change angles, basically. And we have all sorts of different effects, blurring effects, slow motion, uh, we have all these, um, you know, montages. We have all sorts of different long one-shots. We have all sorts of different chopped up montages. That goes extremely well with the music. By the way, the music in this movie is also epic. It's not like grand epic, like impeccably amazing. It's really well composed. The songs are really well chosen. And with the montages, of course, again, I love montages. And to see montages this great is truly a, a pleasure to me. And, um, again, I, I can't stop talking about the cinematography and the lighting and the color schemes of this movie as well. The color schemes, they are epic. And, um, you know, we are following the story of Jamal from, uh, since he is a, he's a young kid, a five-year-old kid, Till his uh, his adolescent adult life, and uh, throughout this time, uh, we see color changes, color palette changes, and that is just very creative, a very creative way. And also, this movie won an award for best sound mixing, I think, which is also pretty cool, um, because I mean, to be honest, it's pretty nice. The sound mixing is pretty nice. Uh, there are these shots sometimes where it feels like the camera is taking uh, a photo, but it's a lot of different photos mashed up together. Uh, it feels like a stop motion video, and then you get these noises in the background. It becomes a very, a very realistic uh, interpretation of recalling a distant memory. Um, which is which plays a huge role in this movie because this movie is told through flashbacks and that's why uh, we have these very vivid uh, memories being recalled but we have we also have these very blurry visions and uh, Dev Patel is also very very great in this movie he really brings out the emotion and the pain with his body language and his facial expressions and uh, overall with all of these great elements about this movie uh, the audience can easily be put into the character's shoes especially Jamal's shoes and um, because of that I feel extremely extremely moved by the end of the movie and uh, I I cannot stop sympathizing with Jamal. So, uh, again, very impactful, very inspiring, and I'm giving a spoiler alert because I'm talking about the plot, the freaking plot. Oh yeah, by the way, before spoiler alert, you must watch this movie, but if you haven't watched it, I'll explain it to you. Uh, it's told through flashbacks because um, in the present day, Jamal was playing a, a, a game of who wants to be a millionaire. So he needs to answer all these questions and then they answered them and then he answered them all correctly and that's insane right and uh apparently he answered all of them correctly is because coincidentally throughout his lifetime he learned about all these you know trivia all of these facts so because of that the entire movie feels like um feels like a puzzle feels like uh a storyboard that has all these Easter eggs in them that would later become one of the questions asked in that uh, who wants to be a millionaire program so um, it just feels like this story is is being strung out it's being stringed out by all of these different questions and uh, it feels it feels like a game it feels like a game you are on your own, Jamal. <sighs> Hello? 
So, okay, I'm giving a spoiler alert. So, uh, I'm gonna be a bit brief, because, um, there's a lot to say about the plot, but, uh, you know, the flashbacks start off with young Jamal at age five, uh, and uh, the question was basically about uh, a film star, a very uh, famous Bollywood film star, and, um, Amitabh Bachchan, Bachchan, uh, it says in here, I, I, I probably butchered it, but, uh, in order to get that, like, Jamal was taking a shit, and, uh, but then that actor came, and because Jamal wanted his autograph, so he literally jumped into the poop and ran out to the actor and got a signature. And, uh, that is just a really bold start to the series of flashbacks that we get, and it shows how committed and how passionate that Jamal is. And later on in the movie, you know, we see Jamal working super hard in order to survive. And um, it's a really great foreshadowing, I guess. And then, of course, we have Salim. Salim stole his signature and sold it. And and then after that, you know, we can all see that, you know, Salim's kind of a jerk. Salim is a selfish person who just wants money. And then, uh, and then there's a question, and then there's a question about the riot. So, um, Jamal and Salim was, uh, taking a shower in, like, a public pool or something. That's very, very dirty. Uh, and then his, mo their mother was all, was over there. And, and then riot came by, like, the riot showed up. And, uh, the question was basically about, uh, like, this riot is, like, a religious riot. And the question is basically about, you know, what items does these rioters hold? Rioters. Riot people. And uh, uh, Jamal was like, I wish I didn't know the answer. Because because of this riot, uh, their mother died. And they had to escape. And that is the cruel and uh, very dangerous life of living in India. Back then, you know, India back then was very undeveloped and there were all these riots everywhere and criminals and gangsters and seeing this happen shows how difficult their life is. And being separated from their mother at such early age is such a painful thing. And then they ran into a girl named Latika and they called themselves the Three Musketeer because they learned it at school, which is really cool because, um, it showed that, you know, they have very little knowledge. They have very little knowledge about the Three Musketeers, actually. But they still called themselves the Three Musketeer because, um, it feels like... I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like they believe in what they see. Which is not, like, a bad thing because they have a very strong belief. And then, um, and then, uh, they became, you know, stray kids... And they were searching trash, searching for trash, and were trying to sell them. And then Maman came, which is a gangster who tricks and trains street children to become beggars and scam money. And, uh, you know, when Maman came and gave them, like, bottles of cola, I was already like, don't, don't drink it, don't drink it. And, and they, of course... They drank the bottle of cola, and they all passed out, and, um, uh, and then at first, like, Jamal and Salim and Latika, um, you know, they were being treated really well, quote-to-quote, quote, really well by this Maman person, and they were all like, wow, Maman is a saint, and, um, again, that shows, that shows how naive and innocent uh, Jamal, Salim, and Latika, and other kids are. You know, and uh, the fact that they still don't know about the truth, about the society, about the world, and how difficult and broken their lives actually are. And then, of course, we have, uh, we have a question about a poem, a song. And, uh, wow, this is really fucked up, by the way. So this Maman person, he forced the kids to sing this one song, and if they were a good singer, he pours, like, alcohol on their eyes and make them blind. 
so that they can sing in the streets and people will give them money and then the money goes to Maman. And uh, that is, um, that's just very terrible, very dark, very gruesome as well. And then we see uh, Jamal, uh, who, who worked for Maman, and uh, Jamal saw that people get blinded by Maman, and Maman wasn't actually a saint. And he helped Salim and Latika to escape, and it shows how loving and caring Jamal is of a person, despite the fact that they are all very naive and innocent kids. And they escaped onto a train where where uh, they scammed. Oh yeah, by the way, this is this is a really like devastating scene. Like Salim, Jamal, and Latika was about to escape, right? Latika couldn't escape. Like Latika was left behind. So uh, later on, uh, Jamal and Salim were on that train where they scam people, and there's this montage that's really great. It shows how they grow up, and um, they kept on scamming people, and they arrived at Taj Mahal, and uh, Jamal was like, is this heaven? Uh, which, which provides a little bit of comedy. Uh, and this is the act in the movie where it brings a lot of comedy, because Jamal and Salim were scamming people, in such a, a funny way, in my opinion. Uh -huh. Especially that scene in Taj Mahal, where Jamal was trying to explain history to the tourists. And, um, you know, again, I like it when comedy and drama mixes. It gives, it, it makes the movie so real, because in reality, comedy and drama coexists. And, um, <clears throat> and then after a while, they... Uh, when they grew up even more, they tried to find Latika again, which sounds like a very crazy thing, because they hadn't seen Latika for a while, and uh, they don't know where's Maman, they don't know where they are at all, so um, it's pretty crazy. But at the end, they somehow found Latika, and uh, it was a really touching moment. And uh, Salim became a very bad person in general, and he had a gun, so he shot Maman. And um, and then he, uh, Salim and Maman's rivals became partners in crime. And uh, Salim forced Latika to stay with him and and kind of pushed Jamal away, which is very cruel. Like for all these years, Jamal was very kind and loving and caring to Salim, but Salim at the end did this very bad decision. And uh, it just feels very, very disappointing, very angering as well. And uh, again, you know, we were in Jamal's shoes the whole time. So being in Jamal's shoes and to experience all this is pretty crazy. Uh, I remember this one question about the, the $10 bill, I think. And, uh, you know, they somehow found one of the uh, child slaves that uh, that Maman had before, and uh, and uh, he was blind because he was good at singing. So um, I don't know. Like someone asked that boy a question, like "Who's that on the ten dollar bill?" and and the boy said, "It's Benjamin Franklin." So uh, it's Benjamin Franklin, because this is also the same questions, the same question asked during the the game. So, uh, yeah, I like how every single question and answer in the game, in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, brings such heavy weight and brings such powerful history to it. And then, um, of course, uh, many years later, um, Jamal became a chaiwala and a phone company. And, uh, f not phone company, I forgot. And then, um, and then it all leads up to, um, yeah, I gave a spoiler alert, right? So Salim died. And uh, because at the end, Salim regretted everything that he did. And he wanted to help Jamal by um, bringing him Latika again. So um, Salim died. And before he died, he said, God is great. And that is just a... What a death. What a death. And uh, not only are the flashbacks interesting, the game itself is interesting. We see the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire trying to trick Jamal into answering the wrong question. and uh, But once again, Jamal was very smart. 
and Jamal managed to, you know, answer the right question. And the last question was about the, the three musketeer, and he phoned, phoned a friend, and Latika picked up, and it was really emotional, it was such a relief at the same time. And at the end, Jamal and Latika met up in the train station, they kissed, and then a dance number happened. Uh, except I actually really enjoyed the dance number, because um, it pays off a lot. Not like it's, it's the dance number at the end of the Emoji Movie. Like, the Emoji Movie ended off in such a cringy way, but this movie ended off the opposite, which is a very powerful but yet fun and pleasant way, because uh, it's just such a big payoff at the end. And uh, it's Danny Boyle, Danny Boyle in an attempt to imitate Bollywood movies, because Bollywood movies tend to end off in a dance number, so so it's not like a Bollywood, it's like Boylewood, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, it it ended off with Jai Ho, which also won Best Original Song. Uh, I also kind of like the song as well. And overall, it's very memorable, it's such a powerful movie. The acting is great, the editing, the cinematography is great. There's this one scene where, uh, you know, when Jamal was being interrogated, uh, Jamal was like, um, do you remember, like, this bike was stolen? Do you, do you know who stole it? And then there's this street food, and Jamal was like, do you know the price? And um, we see these very blurry images, you know, it's just really well written. Every single shot, every single scene in the entire movie, every single moment is also very intriguing and interesting, because that's not how we see things. It's different. It's a different style in every shot in every scene, and um, overall, in the full picture, it just feels so dirty, so spotty, so disgusting, so painful, so so cheap, so low-grade, and uh, it just shows how difficult life in, uh, life in uh, India is. And, uh, oh yeah, there, there's also one scene when Jamal met Salim after all of these years, and uh, Jamal was, like, Jamal envisioned in his head pushing Salim out of a building, and then, it, and but then it didn't happen because apparently it's just his imagination. I really like that as well, but uh, damn, so, so creative. Um... Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about this great, great movie. This is going to be the second movie that I am giving a 10 out of 10. Really deserves a 10. Really, really deserves a 10. And really deserves Best Picture as well. So, have you watched Slumdog Millionaire from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it, and subscribe if you want more.